So I've started to see Gotham Knights in a different light. This has become something that's very interesting because in the past few days, a lot has probably shown up. If you think about it, Digital Foundry went back to revisit Gotham Knights. They talked a little bit about some of the visuals. They compared it to Arkham as, you know, they did not as much in their second retesting, to be honest. And I was quite surprised as to, in my opinion, what I thought was some of the things that they came up with, some of the things they may have missed, or maybe just the perception of the game that, you know, they don't necessarily have. Now, I made a video talking a little bit about this. One of my audience members told me to look into their, you know, retesting or whatever it may be. And I thought, you know, there's maybe something there that, you know, we could glean from. There's nothing. <laughs> you know, those of you that played Gotham Knights that enjoyed the game, you know, or maybe didn't enjoy the game. You know, I think the best place to actually communicate about it is with other gamers and kind of see a diverse perspective in regard to how things are perceived. Now, what I noticed is this game, Gotham Knights, is more of a, in a sense, meme than anything else. I don't know if you guys saw my video yesterday. I pointed out something about Joe Schumacher's Batman and Batman, uh, you know, and Robin movies. This was Batman Forever in 95. This was Batman and Robin in 1997. This particular movie showcased a very interesting kind of Gotham City, a Gotham City that, you know, for the most part, many of us had not necessarily considered to be something that was somewhat of a meme in the past. And then I was running around Reddit and I saw that apparently in this particular, uh, you know, string right as the game was first unveiled, that people had already caught on to this. I just never really did. So here on the R Arkham Reddit, this is the Arkham, uh, Batman Arkham, you know, subreddit. Somebody made this post three years ago. Post did not get any traction, didn't even get any, uh, you know, upvotes that was even, you know, in a sense, uh, significant. But somebody mentioned it and said, Gotham Knights is a Joe Schumacher film. Totally just realized that Mr. Freeze's plot in Gotham Knights is taken from Batman and Robin and all the neon and extra colors, too. So the idea is, according to a lot of folk who were in this particular ecosystem with the, you know, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin movies, they kind of saw these movies in different lights. Some of them saw it as a meme. Some of them saw it as a landmark movie overall. They thought this was definitely the stuff of legend. And, you know, depending on who you spoke to, I think we see this in even with the Snyder Cut in our time, where some people think the Snyder Cut should have just never existed. Some people think that they should just have, you know, gone away and so on and so forth. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's still something that, you know, has different opinions that actually, you know, is attached to it in a sense. So I'm very interested to see how people are able to go ahead and reconcile the fact that Gotham Knights literally took a whole bunch of notes from this particular landmark Batman movie. I'm not saying it was the greatest set of movies, the Schumacher movies. I'm just saying that it's a landmark because it kind of like set a divide when it comes to, you know, how its world was built, how it was very neon-esque. That's my alarm. I, I beat you alarm. And so on and so forth. And I'm really interested to see how you guys resonate with this because these depictions of Gotham are actually very, you know, very close to what Gotham Knights is about. What was really crazy is the Gotham Observatory, uh, Observatory or Observatory, whatever it is you want to call it, um, is written in almost the same font that Gotham National Bank is written in in Gotham Knights in the game. <laughs> It's so funny in a sense to see that, you know, a lot of the structures, a lot of the buildings are actually, you know, in a sense adopted and the way the game looks. No wonder, in a sense, the, the game's design is actually limited by the art style for the most part. I don't know if you guys remember when uh, PlayStation Access was talking about the game back in the day. This is where they first told, this is where we first found out that the game was going to be 30 FPS on console where, you know, people that didn't see that particular, uh, you know, early access preview did not hear that video, but there were like 20, 30,000 people who actually watched that video. A lot of people said they were hiding the fact that it was 30 FPS. I disagree with that. That's a bunch of load of nonsense because that was actually heard. Now, the developers never said anything about it, but it's not something that we didn't know overall until people started trying to make it a big deal. See, gamers are overreactionary. Everything has to be a big, huge drama like we're babies for, you know, sometimes. And so this particular guys, they talked about how the world 
was built with lighting placed in very specific areas, hand placed anyways, by a bunch of different, uh, you know, artists just to be able to accentuate, you know, their design of the world and so on and so forth. And it was very interesting to see that this particular set of lighting, uh, you know, paradigms, in my opinion, I think would have probably been a huge task on the game itself in its performance. So the art style and the art design have been very, very critical, you know, to exactly what the game is. I mean, you think about everything, even some of the villains. I remember, you know, just going back to watch just a few previews of Batman versus Robin, and you could tell that some of the villains are just... <laughs> super corny bro like it's not even <laughs> just the way we had the smashy smashy smash smash guy that was at the beginning that was basically you know just so weird you get to see a lot of that here the color choices the you know the skins and all of that it is really the developers going ahead to kind of like uh, i don't know what it is maybe accentuate like their own um exposure to batman and i will not be surprised if because of the demographics of the devs did watch these movies while they were growing up, they decided that they were going to go this route to make it a thing where their Batman game was going to be reflective of this. And it made it unique and it made it stand out. Again, it's just a matter of our appreciation by, you know, whomever is watching it. Because, you know, one of my audience members and I was talking and he said, well, it's not a matter of about the art. It's just the game doesn't look good. And I was like, well, some people thought Elden Ring didn't look good. And, you know, that's so that's subjective. And, you know, they had to concede and say, yeah, you know, some people like, you know, maybe some PlayStation folk who weren't really happy about, you know, the fact that it overshadowed Horizon Forbidden West were not happy about it. Well, I mean, I could always say that, you know, maybe people who who did not necessarily want another game that wasn't an Arkham game were probably not happy that Gotham Knights came out and an Arkham game didn't come out. Well, I, like I've said in my other videos, if you're not happy that an Arkham game didn't come out, you know who to talk to, man. They're the ones that are making you your wonderful, I don't know, whatever it is you want to call it in this uh, you know, regard. So I really do like the way things are coming full circle with Gotham Knights. I think it's now the, no longer the conversation because, first of all, it used to be this conversation, that, oh, yeah, the devs don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to make the game and blah, blah, blah. Now we see that their game is actually probably the only representation of Schumacher's, uh, you know, Batman vision in video games. Tim Burton and Grant Morrison have gotten their representations in a sense. They got their representations in Arkham Asylum. Uh, you know, some of the Batman animated series, according to you, is what influenced the Arkham games. So if you kind of like start categorizing them you start to see that oh there are these themes going on and that crazy you know and so you can't necessarily say that they didn't do a good job when the representation is basically something that you know was of a time quite appreciated or at least not appreciated and you can also even say that even some people might point out and say well how about insomniac spider-man why does that game actually have you know some really really cool looks and so on and so forth I would argue that there are some elements in, uh, you know, Insomniac's Marvel Spider-Man and Mar Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales that do take, um, you know, some notes from looking at, say, the 90s Spider-Man animated TV show. I don't know if many of you watched it. This was something that was actually shown. It had a very limited number of episodes. The way that that, you know, game really did show up on uh, the radars of a lot of people was it, it was a landmark uh, TV show, TV series. And I, I'm in the I'm in a position to say that, you know, to be honest with you, for most people that probably watch that show, if you were playing Insomniac like Spider-Man, you notice that the night skies are very, very representative of what that Spider-Man cartoon, uh, you know, brought. And so that was that was actually my favorite Spider-Man cartoons. I'm not really a big Spider-Man fan, but those cartoons, uh, radioactive Spider-Man soundtrack cartoons, they really look like your Marvel Spider-Man game at night and even sometimes at day. So the influence is there in all of our different superhero games. And I think for those who are judging Gotham Knights and say, oh, the art style is representative of the fact that of not even the fact of what they think that the developers could not do in terms of designing their world because it doesn't look like Arkham. To me, it's now a misnomer. I think we should throw that argument away. And if you don't throw it away, I'm going to argue with you over and over again. And I'm going to continue to showcase, you know, my little archive of Schumacher's, um, you know, little uh, <laughs> art style and neon cyberpunk look as how it's very close to Gotham Knights. In fact, I did an experiment, showed a non-gamer, my wife, I said, 
she's I, she's never really seen these Batman old movies. So I took this picture to her and I said, hey, what do these pictures look like to you? And she said, isn't it your game that you play? I, I'm mixing them up. And she was like the one where there's uh, and she's and she finally came to the conclusion. And I didn't even say anything. I just kept listening to her stumble over the different game titles because I was like, she's just she's trying to figure out what game it is. And she said Gotham Knights. And I was like, that's crazy that somebody who doesn't even play the game, you know, who's seen both, you know, art styles and both world landscapes is coming out with that conclusion that these games seem to be influenced by one another. And she said, is this the game that they actually took their influence from? That's the question that she asked next, which is a very valid question. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is why it's very, very important to not be too hasty to jump into all of this so-called superhero, you know, I said who's super, all this so-called, uh, you know, critics and their views, rather to play the game yourself, if you want anyways, or at least look at what it is that they're actually bringing into the conversation. There are many other things going on in terms of how pertinent it is with uh, looking at, say, a game like Wolong. I don't know if many of you have seen Wolong. Wolong, the conversation is, oh, it feels like, you know, maybe uh, Elden Ring and uh, Sekiro, somebody reviewed it. I think Fighting Cowboy reviewed it and said it's a game where it seems like Elden Ring and uh, what's the other game had a baby or something like that. That was his conclusion anyways. So I just wanted to bring that here in its own specific video and talk a little bit about it because... I think it's it's very interesting overall to see, and I'm curious as to how reactions would be if they even care. Nobody cares anyways if they care, but how reactions would be if people were to start to pay very close attention to this particular level uh, you know, of detail now that we've pretty much discovered and see how overall this Gotham is one that is, in a sense, in its own universe, has uh, outside influence and... I think is probably a creative way for the developers to express their own art in regard to how they build their Gotham world. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.